people movers, compact hatchbacks, good advice and Formula One. We have it all on the show this week. Welcome to Overdrive, I'm Sandeep Srikant. Let's start things off with a comparison test. I drove the Nissan Ivali a few months ago and came away very impressed with its value for money proposition. But how does it compare with the reigning king of the Indian MPV segment? Let's find out. This MUV has become an everyday sight on Indian roads. We use it as a support vehicle on all of our shoots and with good reason. Since its launch, the incredibly tough and versatile Toyota Innova has been the best seller in its segment, seeing off all comers to dominate the Indian MPV scene. But now the Innova has another significant new rival in the form of the Nissan Ivalia. And today we're going to pick them both head to head to find out which of these MUVs is the best all-rounder. And to help me do that, I'll be joined by Ashok George, who's going to be driving both cars, and our entire CNBC TV18 production crew, who are going to weigh in with their inputs as well. MPVs need to be tough and versatile. When we go out to shoot for overdrive, our unit vehicle needs to carry at least five crew members and a lot of luggage. So let's see how the two contenders match up when it comes to space. The Evalia, or NV200 as it's known globally, is already the taxi of choice in New York and will soon replace the iconic black cabs of London. While it can seat eight at a pinch, the driver and front passenger sit upright, like in a van. The middle row bench is comfortable and headroom is excellent, even in the third row. But once you squeeze in there, knee room and foot space is restricted. The Innova, on the other hand, feels immediately more car-like for the front row. You can spec it with a bench or captain seats in the middle. And as for the third row, I'll just let Ashok tell you more. Now, when it comes to space, both the Ivalia and the Innova are pretty much at par. But uh, the difference is that, uh, or rather the advantage the Innova has, is that the second row in the Innova is slidable, which frees up a lot of knee room for the passenger sitting in the third row. Uh, another advantage is that there are no intrusions in the footwell here. So you have a relatively more comfortable seating position. But if you ask me, the most crucial thing is that the seats in the Innova in the third row are the most comfortable that I've sat in in a long time in a third row. While carrying a full load of passengers is a key requirement in the MPV market, of almost equal importance is the ability to carry luggage. Both vehicles have third row seats that fold away to liberate a lot of usable luggage space but having lifted and loaded every bag and bottle we had with us as many times as was necessary to make an informed decision, I had a winner. With these third row seats folded away, both the Innova and the Evalia have roughly the same amount of boot space. But the Evalia still has two distinct advantages. With the third row up and passengers actually sitting there, this car definitely has more usable space here at the back. And the second is the fact that it has a ridiculously low loading lift. So moving big bags in and out of the boot is an absolute breeze. The most important reason why the Innova is overdrive support vehicle is that it provides a stable base for our cameramen to shoot their tracking shots. So with Viber well settled in and our driver Ashraf behind the wheel, it is time to get a move on and let Ashok talk about power plants and give the crew a shot at evaluating the ride and drivability. The engine in the Ivalia is the 1.5 litre K9K motor that does duty in Renault and Nissan cars all over the world. Now in this state of tune, it makes 80 PS and 200 Nm of torque. The torque figure is identical to that in the Innova, but what I do feel is that the Ivalia lacks that low down torque that the Innova does. What I do like about this car is the gearbox. Extremely short throws and very precise. Feels like it came out of a hatchback. Very nice. The Evalia is also more manoeuvrable than it looks, with light steering and a surprisingly small turning circle. Thanks to its light weight, the engine never feels underpowered, with the 0 to 100 sprint taking 14.3 seconds, a full 2.5 seconds quicker than the Innova. The Evalia's trump card, however, is its mileage, generating an overall figure of over 16 km per litre. Nissan tracking complete, Vivo moved his unit into the Evalia and set off to film the Innova, while Ashok completed his roundup of driving dynamics. The Innova has a 1000cc advantage over the Evalia. While the Evalia makes 80 PS, this car makes 102, that's a difference of 22 odd PS. The torque figure remains somewhat the same, it's 200 Nm for both. But what I do like about this car 
is that one, the power delivery is very very linear. There are no nasty bumps in between. And the second thing is that it reminds you of a car. The driving position, the seats, everything looks like it came out of a hatchback or a sedan. It doesn't feel like you're hauling around a near two-ton MPV. The Innova's blend of performance and handling has set the standard for the segment in India. But despite having the bigger engine, it is slower on the 0 to 100 sprint, clocking 17.6 seconds. And it's also less efficient, with an overall figure of 11.8 km per litre. Now that you've heard the testers' views, let's see what the camera crew, who spend a lot more time than us in MPVs, thought of the two contenders. I found the Ivalia much better to suit the tracking sequence than Innova because the floor is lower and flatter and the ride quality was good and uh, my shot was good, smoother. This Innova is good for me that I don't have any trouble with it. I don't have any trouble with the seat. And the other thing, we do long drive for long drive. लॉन्ग ड्राइव के लिए भी हम अगर जाते हैं तो हमें कोई तकलीफ नहीं है कोई ऐसा ये परेशानी नहीं है कोई भी रोड के पर ये गाड़ी अच्छी तरीके से चलती है एंड दैट लीव्स अस विद लुक्स एंड फीचर्स द एस्पेक्ट्स दैट रियली डिवाइड द टू कंटेंडर्स व्हाइल द इवेलियस कैबिन इज वेल स्पेक विद एयरबैग्स साउंड सिस्टम एंड इवन अ पार्किंग कैमरा ऑन द टॉप स्पेक वेरिएंट इट कान मेजर अप टू द इनोवास कार लाइक एंड फुल्ली लोडेड कैबिन When it comes to looks, there can be only one winner. While Nissan has worked hard on the Evalia styling, there is only so much that can be done to soften its van-like silhouette. And even though the Innova is now an all-too-familiar sight on Indian roads, it is the more handsome and well-integrated design. Now, the interesting thing about this Comparo is that when you look at things in purely utilitarian terms, the Evalia actually makes this a very close battle. It's spacious, it's got a lot of usable boot space, it's got a frugal engine and it's really easy to drive. But the fact is, in India, people like you and me are the people who buy MPVs. People who have large families and want to drive their vehicles every single day. And that's when the Evalia starts to have problems. Isn't that right, Ashok? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, if you ask me, the Innova definitely has more aspirational value than the Evalia. The Evalia is a bit too much of an MPV or minivan for my liking. Personally, I wouldn't mind being seen driving an Innova, but the Evalia, maybe not so much. And that's why, despite the fact that the Innova is almost 2 lakhs more expensive than the Evalia, it makes you feel like it's worth every single penny that you've spent. And that's why it's still the king of the Indian MPV hill.